Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship. Very glad you could uh, join us this morning. I um, want to just say a word of uh, welcome to everybody as well as to make sure that everybody is aware that uh, you don't need to be a member of the church to receive uh, the elements of communion. We practice an open uh, communion table, uh, which means all worshipers are invited to uh, receive the bread and the cup this morning. Uh, this is a special service in the life of the church because it's my last worship service. I um, was able to uh, celebrate communion with uh, uh, worshipers uh, upstairs uh, in the sanctuary where we've been able to worship uh, one Sunday uh, in our sanctuary. Uh, otherwise, we've been here since uh, uh, the end of September uh, worshiping in Fellowship Hall uh, so that we could all continue to be uh, accessible to all people and worship as one, uh, one body. Um, very glad that you could join us this morning. I want to thank uh, Tim and John for being our representatives from uh, the Southeast Association uh, Church and Ministry Team. Uh, they're here to represent the association because uh, the relationship between a pastor and the congregation and congregation and the pastor is not only a one-on-one -on -one relationship, but it's also a relationship that in involves all the churches of the association uh, where I keep my uh, ordained standing. Um, want to uh, thank Jason uh, uh, for being our, our worship leader this morning. Uh, Jason is also, as moderator of the church, will be participating in the Liturgy of Farewell that will take part at the end of the service. I uh, want to thank Heidi um, for being our music leader. And I told her already this morning, uh, but I'm going to miss uh, her playing. Uh, and you will witness why I'm going to miss her playing uh, this morning uh, when she does her special music. Not to put any pressure on <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, following the worship service, there is a, a special luncheon. Uh, and I hope that everyone is able to stick around uh, to, uh, to, to have fellowship and uh, 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 help to allow me to be able to say goodbye to everybody. Um, this is a really surreal uh, moment for me. Um, it seems very strange. Um, just a couple of minutes ago, I was reflecting um, that when I had to say goodbye to my previous church uh, over in Elkhorn, um, I had to do it in the parking lot outside because it was the middle of the pandemic. Um, and uh, we had, uh, it was rainy, snowy, horrible day. We had to put like a, a little tent outside, uh, which I was able to huddle in until people would pull up in their car. I would have like a an open time period that people would kind of pull up and say, bye, and, then, um, and that was after 25 years. So I feel especially lucky uh, that I am able to say, even just after three years, uh, to be able to say uh, farewell in person and uh, in the midst of a worship service. And it's very special to me to be able to share communion uh, with you all on this last worship service. So uh, um, I thank you. I'll say a little bit more uh, later in the service, but. Um, I'm just, I'm glad you all could be here this morning. Um, let's see, so in the bulletin, you'll see that the rest of April, uh, we're going to have some supply preachers. Uh, Bob Wells, who is currently chaplain at uh, Cedar Campus, um, is going to be our uh, preacher next Sunday. Uh, Bob is very experienced. Uh, I'm sure that you'll hear, uh, you'll enjoy hearing what he has to say. Um, and then uh, the last two Sundays of the month, Jim Gorman, another very experienced minister, uh, will be here. And uh, I know uh, uh, Jean Mann used to be a member of one of Jim's churches, uh, and uh, she heartily recommends Jim's preaching. So, uh, um, so I hope that you're able to be here uh, for the, the Sundays in April. Uh, beginning in May, the hope is that we will have a, a, a kind of more... Uh, you know, I don't know what the, a real interim minister, I, I don't know what the, what the term is, but a, a settled interim minister here um, who will lead you through the, the transition process um, until you can call a, a new pastor. Um, let's see, I think that that's all that. Does anyone else have any announcements or anything that needs to come before us at this time? Um, I do want to just give one special shout out to the Dimmer family. Um, they were at Lily's uh, gymnastics meet uh, until about 7 o'clock last night, came here at about 8 o'clock and set everything up because we had had a uh, bridal shower uh, here in Fellowship Hall um, on Saturday. And uh, when this family scheduled the bridal shower, 
I was positive <laughs> that we would be worshiping up in the sanctuary by this time, and that we would not have a conflict with any anything going on here in Fellowship Hall. But uh, unfortunately, that did not come to pass. But thanks to uh, uh, the dimmers uh, that came in here last night, uh, moved tables, set up chairs, cleaned things up, and uh, so really appreciate their their efforts. Um, anything else that needs to come before us? If not, uh, let's uh, continue our worship service.
join me in lifting our opening prayer as printed in the bulletin. Eternal God, commanding of all who seek you, and seeker of all who turn away from you, draw near to us that we may draw near to you, and grant us the grace to love and serve you, that we may find in your will our true freedom, through Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, now pass the peace of Christ with our friends and neighbors gathered here in worship. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. If you would like to follow along, it can be found on page 115 of the New Testament. This story of Jesus' appearance to some of the disciples begins on the evening of the day of resurrection. Thomas is now present with the other disciples and does not experience Jesus coming to them. Because of this, his persistence, he comes to believe and even goes a step further than the rest. Here is a reading from John's Gospel. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven given them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was now with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading of our sacred text. May the Spirit add to our understanding of God's holy word.
Let's uh, be together in prayer. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit present with us. Thank you for all the elements of the worship service, the music, the prayers, the warm fellowship of friends and family. We thank you for the scripture text and its proclamation. We thank you, God, for all these elements that along with your spirit begin to shape and form and mold us that we might become more and more every day the disciples that you call us to be. Help us to use the scripture texts as a lens through which to see our lives and the world around us. Help us to see clearly the path that you laid before us. All of this, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Um, I have said before, but um, I, I'm quite certain that I have preached on this particular gospel text more than any other text in the three-year uh, lectionary. The reason is that I got a five-year head start uh, from the other scripture text because as an associate pastor out in Connecticut, um, the senior pastor always got to preach on Easter to the big crowds. But then uh, the Sunday after Easter... It's Associate Pastor Sunday, and the Associate Pastor gets to uh, uh, speak to, uh, to not as many, certainly, people uh, the Sunday after Easter. And this scripture text of Thomas and uh, his journey of faith is always the text after Easter. Um, as a solo pastor here in Elkhorn, uh, I used to save my Sunday vacation days for the summertime so I could be off with the kids. Uh, so. I always preached Easter and the Sunday after Easter, so uh, I preach on this text quite a bit. And I've noticed over the years as I read this text, I can remember the sermons I preached, and I, I know I have used Thomas as a, I've always felt a close affinity to Thomas. Uh, I came uh, into ministry and into the church and into my faith very hesitantly, with a lot of questions, with a lot of doubts, with a lot of uh, things that I just, I just didn't, wasn't sure that I could be the pastor that I had grown up with, a pastor who I kind of put on a pedestal and, uh, you know, I just didn't think I could, you know, it wasn't until I became, you know, more of an adult and got to know him, got to know other clergy that I realized that, uh, you know, it was human. It was very natural to have questions and doubts and, and things. And so then I could see more clearly a path towards ordination. Um, I also found very powerful uh, when Jesus, uh, see, in, in John's Gospel, uh, this is kind of the Pentecost story. The Pentecost is the birth of the church. In, in the Gospel of Luke and in Acts, uh, Pentecost comes on uh, Pentecost. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit comes on Pentecost. Uh, but here, Jesus breathes on the disciples. He breathes the Spirit onto the disciples. And uh, he tells them that if uh, you retain the sins of any, they are retained, and if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And uh, I know that I've preached a lot of sermons about that message, about how a group of, of men and women uh, in this, up this, this room uh, locked away for fear had just come through a time in which they had uh, abandoned Jesus. They had denied even knowing Jesus that one amongst their ranks had even betrayed Jesus. They had all failed. And so for Jesus to come into their midst and to breathe the Spirit upon them, I think that they brought forward with them a sense of forgiveness because they realized that they had been forgiven themselves. And isn't that the kind of church that we would want to be a part of? A church that, that, that receives forgiveness and offers forgiveness itself. Um, I've, always, I've also preached a number of sermons about Thomas, about that Thomas had a bad publicist. <laughs> he had a bad PR person because he's known as Doubting Thomas, but it would just as easily be, be likely to call him Faithful Thomas or Persistent Thomas. Because while at first he doubts, he stays connected. He stays connected, and he's able to have an experience of the risen Christ. There are a number of things that could have happened. 
The disciples themselves, when Thomas came back and said uh, he wasn't going to believe unless he could put his hands in Jesus, uh, the wounds uh, in his hands and his side. The disciples themselves could have said, you know what? You weren't a part of getting the Holy Spirit. You don't believe, so hit the road. You're not one of us. Thomas could have said to himself, these guys are nuts. They're crazy. They've, they've gone off the deep end. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm out of here. <laughs> but instead, both Thomas stayed persistent. The disciples stayed open to what might be and that, that if they kept Thomas in communion and in fellowship, that things might change for him. And in fact, both were found to be correct. And again, the sermon to a number of different churches had been, isn't that the kind of church that we want to be? Isn't that the kind of church that in the United Church of Christ we're proud to be? A church in which we know that people are at different places in their faith journey and that that's okay. That they're all still welcome. That we're going to accept people in a variety of places and beliefs and understandings. And that that's okay. Because together, we can experience the presence of the risen Christ right here. But this morning, I want to leave you at least with one more lesson from this rich text. And that's, that's near the end. Uh, one of the things that uh, Thomas comes to believe, he comes to believe and he goes a step further than the rest of the disciples. He says, my Lord and my God, which is something the other disciples have not claimed. But here, Jesus responds to Thomas and says, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, in the other Gospels, in, in, especially in, in Luke and Matthew, we have the Beatitudes, a series of readings in which Jesus pronounces blessings on, on rather unexpected people. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor, or the poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. See, these blessings are a part of those two Gospels. But in the Gospel of John, there isn't, there isn't this series of blessings, but there is this blessing. And it is a blessing not for anyone in the room at that time. Because they're all there, right? They're all there with the risen Christ. What Jesus does, it, what, the, the way that I imagine it, have you, have you watched TV shows or movies where the actor or the actress uh, uh, breaks the fourth wall? Where suddenly, uh, you know, the action has been going on in screen and we're just very comfortable being the viewers of what is happening. And then suddenly one of the actors turns to the audience and says, well, you know, you know what's really going to, you know, that's, that's breaking the fourth wall. And I think... One of the ways to look at this text is that this is a moment in which the writer of John allows Jesus to break the fourth wall. Um, I always, you know, again, I'm a very the book person. I imagine reading the book, and it's almost as if Jesus takes the lines of text and opens them up and walks through and says to us, to me and to you, and says, blessed are you who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. It's a powerful, powerful statement. And it's not meant for the disciples. It's meant for the people who will come a generation later, a, a hundred years later, a millennia later. Blessed are you who have not seen and have yet come to believe. It's a blessing for you blessing for us. And I think as we, you know, you, you're about to move into this transition period, um, this is a time in which we need all the, the blessings that we can receive. Um, you have not seen and yet you have come to believe. You have faith. Mm. And if faith is nothing, it is what Paul described as the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not yet seen. 
Think about that. The assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not yet seen. And that's, that's where this church is right now. And you're going to need all of the faith that you can muster to get through a transition time. This is not necessarily going to be easy. This is not a, a time to uh, take a step back. But this is a time to, in fact, meet Jesus who's stepping towards you with blessings. To say now is a time for faith and trust and faithfulness. Now is the time for us to use the gifts that we've been given to, to, to begin to work towards that, 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 that hope, that assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We don't know what the future is going to look like for you as a church, for this congregation. We don't know what the future is going to look like for the whole mainline church in Wisconsin or around the country. We don't know. And yet, and yet we know that God is at work right here. God is at work in your lives. God is at work whenever you come together to be the church, to be the body of Christ. God is present as we come to the table to take into ourselves the body of Christ that we might become more and more the body of Christ at work in the world. Jesus is calling to us from the words of this ancient text. Blessed are you. And I'll just simply end my message by saying God bless you. Um, it has been uh, a good three years. Um, it has come through a lot of uh, stuff that has taken place in the world and in this community. Talk to Bill Bond afterwards. He has more colorful language to add to that description. Um, but yet, we're here. And God is at work. And Christ is alive. You can get through this. Amen. Amen. Uh, this time, let's share together uh, our hymn number 254, These Things Did Thomas Count.
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, let's be together in prayer. God of grace and glory, God of mercy and of justice, we give you our thanks and our praise for all of the gifts that you have brought to us, the beautiful world that surrounds us with such abundance, the little signs of spring amidst the April showers. We give you thanks for the people in our lives, family members, friends, those folks who show up when we need them in times of joy, in times of sorrow, in times of loneliness. We give you our thanks and praise God. We thank you for individual gifts and talents and abilities, all of those things that you have given to us that we've been given the privilege of developing and using to build up the communities in which we live. We thank you, God, for this church and for the church universal. We thank you that Sunday by Sunday and day by day, the word is listened to, the word is heard, the word is acted out in gifts of charity and love, compassion, mercy. Gracious God, we know that we're not always the people that you've called us to be. We turn away from those who are in need. We turn away from even those close to us out of distraction or out of busyness. Gracious God, you know the worst that we've done, and yet you know each of us and love each of us. You forgive each of us in ways far beyond our imagination. And every time we falter, every time we fail, every time we fall, you are there to catch us, to lift us, to brush us off, and to send us on our way with new opportunities to show our love and our compassion for those around us. This morning, God, we lift to you all those we know to be in special need, the people who we are concerned about and we worry about, friends and neighbors, family members, those who face uh, surgeries like Pat, lift her up in our prayers. We lift up to you Tiffany's friend, recovering after collapsing and needing surgery. We lift up to you the people of Haiti living in time of poverty and violence, chaos. We pray for compassion and justice and peace. For the people of Israel and Gaza, we pray for a ceasefire. <coughs> return of hostages, an end to famine, and the beginnings of new life. Gracious God, we lift up Diana in our prayers and pray for her as she moves across the county. We pray that she might find a, a place of welcome and a place of happiness that we might continue to keep connected with her. We give you thanks, God, for three years of cooperative ministry. And we pray, God, that the gifts of this time might continue into the future. Gracious God, all of these prayers and so many more are on our hearts and minds. In the silence of our sanctuary, hear us as we lift our prayers to you in silence.
Merciful God, we thank you. Whenever we turn our attention to you, we find you are already turned towards us. Thank you for hearing our prayers, even as we lift the prayer that Jesus has taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our ushers will receive the morning's offering. Let us give as we are able according to the blessings which God has already given to us. Jesus took bread and gave you thanks, 
And when he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after they had eaten, Jesus also took the cup, saying to them, This is the cup of a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Loving God, we pray that you would consecrate by your spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that you would bless us, that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and our praise, that we may be united with Christ and with one another, and that we may continue faithful in all things. Gracious God, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ. It is through the cup of blessing through this cup of blessing that we participate in the new life that Christ brings to each of us. This time I'd like to invite Jason and Eric to come forward uh, and then invite everyone to come towards the uh, center aisle to receive the bread and then you can return to your seats uh, receive the cup. Uh, you can either take the elements right here up in front or you can take them back to your seat and take them when you get back in our seat. Uh, but come, for all things are now ready. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. We pray that you would strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Um, at this time, we'll continue our worship with uh, the liturgy of farewell. Scott, before we begin, I just have to say what a blessing it has been and will continue to be to know you as my Christian brother. And may this congregation be blessed in many, many ways as you bless one another in Christ's love. Our church family is constantly changing. People come and go. Babies are born, children grow up. People commit themselves to one another. Loved ones and friends among us come to the end of their lives. Individuals move into our community and church life. Others leave us, moving away to new places, new experiences, and new opportunities. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage of endings and beginnings. Today we share this, the time of farewell with your pastor, who is leaving. On Sunday, September 27, 2020, this local church called the Reverend Dr. Scott McLeod to serve as pastor and teacher. I thank First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, Port Washington, its members and friends for the love, kindness, and support shown me these last three years. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here.
through you and the members and friends of First Congregational UCC, release Reverend Scott McLeod from the duties of pastor and teacher. We do. Do you offer your encouragement for his ministry soon to begin as pastor and teacher of the Community Church of Fontana, United Church of Christ? We do. Do you, Scott, release this local church from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here and on the relationship with another who will come to serve? I do, with the help of God. <laughs> On behalf of the Southeast Association of the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Conference, United Church of Christ, I witness to the words spoken, words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. The member churches of our association and conference hold each of you in prayer. We pledge our support in the transitions signified in this service. Thank you, John. Let us pray together. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughter and tears, our hopes and disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but move in new directions. Until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, before our closing hymn, I just wanted to give Pastor Scott a small token to remember us here at the First Congregational Church in Port Washington. So, a little gift from Port Washington. Thank you. This is something I should. You want you want to be seated for a second before? <laughs> I won't, I won't take, I won't take long. Come on, come on, it's got to be Thank you. My mom always said you have to open up the card first. <laughs> mom was right. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <coughs> Looks like it's from all the uh, members of the church council. Thank you. And here. summer, you know, I mean, it was, it was a thing, wasn't it? In December, see, I remember there was a day in which I, I wrote one letter in response to a, a, a church member that was complaining that we hadn't just opened up the church and that we should have opened it a long time ago. And then I wrote, that same day, I wrote another letter to another member of the church who was upset that we had opened up the church at all, <laughs> that we should still be closed. The thing that amazed me is when I looked back at the date of that letter, it was December of 2021 that I wrote that letter. Mm. That was December of my first year. I mean, I had gone through the whole year with this, with this stuff. You all had gone through this whole year with all this stuff going on. It was, it was a difficult time. Um, and uh, I am so thankful um, to everyone who kind of stuck through uh, this process and uh, stuck through and uh, uh, were tenacious enough about your love for this um, church and for this community of faith. Um, I'm so thankful for uh, people who have kind of come back 
um, after you know perhaps being a little bit frustrated with things, but uh, who held on anyways and came back. Um, I, I, I really am um, very grateful for you and, and to you for this. Um, I have said before that it is not the job of a church to employ a pastor, that, that, that the church is about much more than just having a full-time pastor. Um, and uh, maybe I've come to regret those words a little bit. Uh, maybe I should have been a little bit more emphatic about like, no, you need to have a full-time pastor. Um, but I, I, still, I still stick by that. And I, I really have, I have very high hopes for you. I have a lot of faith um, in the people of this congregation. Uh, again, I said to the church council that there is, a, there is so much talent um, every time I gathered with a group, um, whether it was a, a team meeting or whether it was an adult study or, you know, Wednesday lunch or just around in a fellowship, I've always been impressed with the individual people that are seated around those tables. There is such talent and ability and strength of heart and character. You guys have a lot of gifts, and I am confident uh, that as things move forward, you're you're gonna you're gonna get through this difficult time, this transition, uh, and you're gonna become a stronger faith community uh, because of this experience. Um, I'm just sorry that I can't be the one to, to help get you get you through it. Um, the, uh, the 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 commute has proved to be more than I could handle, um, and uh, I did not anticipate. Uh, uh, when, when Laura and I had to make the decision that we just were not going to be able to move the way that we had hoped to, um, it was a difficult realization that my ministry really was being shaped um, by the fact that I knew that I had a two-hour drive uh, ahead of me. Um, I never, I, I, feel, I feel good about it. I never turned anybody down for a visit, even if it was a day that I wasn't supposed to be in Port Washington. Uh, but I know I may have said no to some opportunities for things because it was a day that I wasn't planning to be in Port Washington. Um, so, uh, so that that is something that I I will accept your forgiveness for. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I, again, I really have um, I have great hope for all of you. There, there, you, you guys got it going on. Uh, Rick, uh, this morning. Um, uh, he, he had a word of thanks um, from the pulpit and he said you know the next church won't be as cool as we were <laughs> that, that may be true uh, you, guys are, you guys are pretty cool so uh, thank you for all of your, uh, uh, your efforts and ministry and uh, I wish you well in the next uh, in the future Close our worship uh, by singing together, Blessed Be the Tie of the Vines. It's number 393.
God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.